Yeah, welcome to London's Craziest Gangster with me, Mr. Fish. Keeper of the Dead Man's Bible, where all the rules of society are thrown, tossed, and washed away. In me, you will see you, and in you, you will see me. I'm the man walking down the pavement, riding on a bus, sitting on a train, looking at all you people thinking, I wonder what it's like to be you. To have it. To wait, to work, to eat, to sleep, to dream, to die. I'm the man who had it all, not popped to piss it. You know, sometimes you get some jobs and crash. Those jobs are hard work. I had to give a geezer a slap once, and uh, I remember um, I had a time limit. There's nothing worse when you get a job with a time limit. Terrible, hard work. And so, uh, crash out your farmer. What happened was, my pal was on holiday in Brazil and this lad had to be done while he was away. But the problem with this job was, because you knew we had a bit of time, you kind of, uh, you kind of take things easy, you don't go as fast as you want. So anyway, I got the crew together. And well, what happened was I, I waited so long we had to do it on the last day. And this job was in a really you know, high populated dense area on a high street. You know, busy. So, you know, this job had to be done quickly, rapidly, in out. There, there was no time for error. Everyone had to know exactly what they were doing and how it had to go. And uh, so, on the last day before he came, I had to put a crew together. The problem was, I never forget, I was one short. And um, so I said to my pal, look, we need an extra guy. The problem with giving slaps are, when people watch the movies, and watch telly and watch the films, they think giving someone a slap is easy work. They think it's easy, but it's not. You know, you have to... Uh, you know, you have to be fit. Uh, you have to be fit, you have to train. Yeah, it's like you know, being in the army. It's like being in the army. You have to, um, you have to do your reconnaissance, all your work. You've got to be fit. To hurt. People think it's easy to um, hurt other human beings. It's not easy because we all have that togetherness. We all have that, like uh, you know, people. So we don't really like hurting other people. Although with today's youngsters, you wouldn't realise that, would you? <laughs> so anyway, I had to bring this crew together. And so we got the car. And I relied on my mate to um, come through. And I relied on my mate to get the extra hand. But what happened was, he, brought the, he told me that this guy was good at what he does and crash. I had to take his word for that, and I believed what he was saying. So what happened was, he brought this guy, but I had to lie. <laughs> the guy had no gloves, so Crash, he's turned up with sticky tape on his feet. <laughs> you know, we're going on a bit of work, and a guy turns up with sticky tape on his feet. I mean, come on. Do you know what I mean? Where'd you live? So anyway, crash out your father. I said, look, mate, you can't, you can't do that. What if it falls off? And that was the whole joke. Imagine that's a bit of sticky tape and a bit of work and it fell off. Well, that's your fingerprint straight away. Yeah? So crash. I said, look, we can't do that. And then I brought another guy, um, you know, uh, who I thought would be up to the game. But, um, you know, he came in, he was dressed in all black obviously watching the movies. <laughs> so anyway, we got together, we got the uh, getaway car, and uh, we were travelling through East London, and we, we got to the job. Now, the slap 
the slap included um, a fractured skull, a broken arm, and broken leg. That's what they wanted. And so, crash. We went in, and I gave them tools to do the slap. But what happened was, because they weren't really in the game, when they're you know, hitting the guy, uh, what happened was this guy was doing things. He was a bully cunt, you know, one of these bullies. So what happened was when I asked them to hit the guy, they couldn't they were hitting him, they were hitting him like like they were lovers. <laughs> you know, a guy like that, you know. And um I was like, mate, come on, what's happening? And it was so crowded where we were, we couldn't really we couldn't really get to him like we wanted. And so Crash House Your Father. I I took the uh, tool off the other thing. I said, right, and gave it to the other fellow I was working with. I said, right, you carry on. But he was so, he was um, so big, he we didn't have, he couldn't get the space to get the leverage that was needed. And so, you know, he too was just tapping, tap, tap, tap. So what happened now? Um, I've had to get in there and start going to work myself in order to get the job done. And this is what I'm saying. It's hilarious. Like, you know, people think they're in the game until they've actually got to do it. So anyway, we give the slap, but as we're leaving, normally when we give a slap, you know, you being in charge, you would wait until crash. You give, I give the order. So I give the order to go in, we give the order to go out. So everyone waits until I give that order. But because, as I said to you, two of them were not used to working, when we're giving the slap and they've seen the claret come out, blood they panicked and gone out so because Dave left my mates who I normally work with he now thinks that I've given the order so as we're walking through we're in a paint we're in a big paint shop and as we're walking through my mate the first one to go grabs a tin of paint and throws it behind me. don't ask me why don't ask me in what in the minimum world you're on a better work you pick up a paint pot and throw it behind you and what it's done it's hit my mate who's the big fella in the face <laughs> crash and so crash what's happened he's blinded now and he's starting crashing in and walking into other things you know <laughs> you couldn't make it up could you so we've got in the car and we're going now the problem was it was uh, busy now, you know, morning traffic, rush hour. It's a crash. We've had to, uh, when you're on bits of work and you get the uh, getaway driver, what you always have to remember is when you're in the car, the driver drives, but you're the eyes. So you, yeah, he's driving, turn left, right. Straight on, left. You have to give the directions, and he's listening to you, and uh, you, uh, you uh, make sure that we that we get out. So anyway, crash out your father. We're directing them home, getting home, and we got back. And then my mate said to me, who got the paint pot in his face, my mate said, do me a favour, fish. If you ever bring that guy on a bit of work again, yeah, I'll do you. <laughs> so you have to laugh. It, 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 it's bad when um, people want to get involved in the game, but um, you know they're not um, they're, they're not. They don't understand what goes with it. I remember I had to do another job. Um, 
Have no flag. <laughs> Which will help. And uh, crash, what happened? It was the first job we had done. And we had to get a hundred grand from um, a Nissan Jeep. And so what happened was we we used an old, uh, an old tool which had the engine in the back. <laughs> and I had to laugh. I, I had to laugh. I had to laugh. Because crash. And this was like the first bit, and it's funny when you talk about prison and going away, and when people talk about crime. The funniest thing in, with prison, what people realise is you make friends, you make contacts, and it's mad. So, you know that 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 could be the start of your criminal of your criminal career. Do you understand? So I I met um, this guy. Um, when I first got arrested in 86, um, I met him on the tour of duty going around different prisons. And I met him up, met up with him in uh, Rochester. And we became good friends. We crash. So even when we came out, we became good friends. And he kind of introduced me into my first job, as it was. And so we had to go and get this money from um, a rucksack that was in this Nissan Jeep. And he chose a tall car as his uh, car, getaway car. So anyway, we plotted up, we waited. And uh, as we went, I've seen it, so I'm the one with the balls. So I've got out, grabbed, grabbed the bag. But what I, unbeknown to me was, <laughs> you got a laugh in your crack. <clears throat> what I never knew, how's your father? I never knew that the engine was in the back of the car. So crash out your father. I grabbed the dough, jumped in the getaway car, but now the Nissan Jeep has started ramming the back of the car, yeah? <laughs> I never knew the engine was in the back. So crash out your father. The engine's now fell out the back. So boom, we've had to get out now and start running. But as we're running now, I've got to offload the dough and still try and think about getting away. And so, I managed to get the dough, I've offloaded it, and now I've hid underneath a motor waiting for my power to come and uh, pick me up. And so crash, he, uh, I've had to wait half an hour, we waited. He came back and picked me up, but uh, what happened was, by the time we went back to get the dough, crash out your father, <laughs> it was gone, but that was my introduction into the game. <laughs> you know, that was the first bit of work I ever went on. It was, you had to laugh. It was, it was quite funny. And this is what I'm saying: a lot of the game, people that enter the game, are opportunists, and they don't, uh, they're not really used to being there. One day, I had to do a job over in uh, South, and was a shop and we had to take the take. So what happened was I had to call my mate to uh, who I knew was up for and it was quite funny because he was he was on the Heathrow job and so I rang him and I said okay look we've got this job let's go and hit it. Okay and so Crash he's turned up and we're waiting outside this um, building so we're waiting. And the funny thing about this yard is the information we had received wasn't exactly correct. Because the information we'd received was old. They take it out each Friday. And so we'd been waiting there for a couple of weeks. But crash, it never materialised. And then something just told me, you know, it was a bank holiday, and something just told me, you know what? Maybe instead of Friday, maybe they're going to take it out on Monday. And so we went down back there on the Monday. And it was weird because I had a motorbike accident 
so I had a bad leg. And I remember saying to my boy that morning, I've got to go and do what I've got to go and do. But like he was begging me, look, don't do it, you're injured. You know, I said, don't worry about it, I'll be all right. So they crash out your father. I got my mate to come and he turned up in a work van and I was like, what's going on here? And he said, I've only got an hour. <laughs> and I was like, hold on, stop. <laughs> you can't, you can't come on bits of work and say you've only got an hour. You don't work like that. You, you know, you don't know how long a job's going to take. You don't know how long you're going to be there. You might have to keep watching, surveilling, surveilling, day and day and day. It could take, it could take a couple of days. It could take a couple of weeks. So you have to be really, really careful. You know, and you have to have time available to do bits of work. But anyway, he said, I've only got an hour, I've got to go back to work. And I was like, well, fuck me. I was like, you're here, like, you're in the game when well, you ain't. So he waited an hour. So when we missed that opportunity, I was going to leave it. But then just something, you know, when something's in your head and goes, you know what? I just think and believe they're going to do this on a Monday. Yeah. That was it, it was just, I, I had that relief, you know? Even though I was injured, and I was a, I still, someone just told me, you know what, let's do it. So I rang up my other pals and said, look, bring them up. I don't need you to do anything, just do the driver. And so crash, we've gone there, and it's a bell. And I was right, they've come out with the dog. So crash out your father. I've got out and I'm injured, and there were two of them. And I've got out and I've got the crash. Yeah? Grab the dog. Now I'm in job on a bad leg, yeah? They're chasing me down. I'm going all through the back streets, yeah? And I've just managed to get to the getaway car and slide in. And, you know, it was that close. Yeah, we just got away, otherwise it was bang on top, you know what I mean? It was murder. That's how close bits of work are. You have to have the balls, the courage, and the brains, you know? You've got to know what you're doing. You have to know what you're doing. So crash out as your father. We managed to get away, carved it all up, and then went on our way. But this is the thing with... Uh, this is the thing with um, different people. This is the thing with different people. How are you, son? I'm in the middle of a podcast. You okay? See you next week. When we training, yeah? Call me, wait. PK, call me when you're training, innit? It's a crash. Yeah, it's a crash. Uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, mate, yeah? Yeah, cool. 10 o'clock. Yeah, be careful, I'm on a podcast right now. He don't want his back. <laughs> Right, You're going to run the podcast now. <laughs> I won't tell you who that is. He's, every, yeah, everyone knows who that is. <laughs> so I'm there with the boy. He's, I won't say who that is. He's, he's, let's just say he knows all about the game. <laughs> so Crash, how's your father? Um, yeah, we had... Um, I had a, 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 you know, that's what people don't understand about these bits of work. They're not always easy. Yeah. There are some times when the opportunity of the jobs, you know, they, they take longer than what you expect. And you can't always get the dough, you know, what you want. And I, so, but some other jobs are easy. I remember once uh, someone... Um, was, took my mate's, uh, well, well, tried to take my mate's car. I didn't want to, I didn't want to pay him. Yeah. So they took his car. So, I didn't want to, I to pay him. They took his car. And they wouldn't really give it back. So what I had to do, I went round him and my car and knocked the door. And sometimes, you know, when you do this kind of thing, no, you, you've got to let people see what you're about. So my, so my mate was going, where's the car? And I'm like, listen, mate, 
Skip to not see me. Sometimes in life, yeah. With the psychopath in the square, yeah. You know, like when people try to be mad, yeah. Sometimes, yeah. I crash out your phone. Can't you stop? Oh. <laughs> Podcasting careful, don't be. <laughs> don't put your face in it unless you oh. want to be a G. <laughs> yeah, we go. It's a crash, yeah. I'm going, I'm putting on the skits, you know. Hey, mate. Yeah, nice car. Oh, well, does it fly right? What, you in the game? Yeah, what, we on this show? You get me? Sometimes the people got to see the craziness before they realise what's going on. Charmy, yeah? You can't always, sometimes you want to try and do things nicely, but you can't. Another time, I had a job up in Balance Road by the pub where the craze, where the craze are, up in Whitechapel. And the guy had a fish stall there. And he was uh, hassling people in the snooker hall in Valence Road. And so I went over to see him. And, you know, people sometimes take your respect and for the years. So sometimes you have to show them the skits, you know. You know say, listen, man, do yourself a favour. F off. If I stick your eyeballs under your feet so you can see where you're going, you know? <laughs> yeah. The other one I love to say is, do me a favour, F off, before I do your mum first, so that when you do me, she'll still hate you. <laughs> These are all the mad sayings that we used to have. Like the best one I love is, do yourself a favour, jog on, before I hurt everything you'd ever love seeing heard and fucking touched. Shall I mean? These are real sense. These are what, what the game's all about. So criminality, ducking and diving, um, and uh, you know, uh, doing what you have to do. I tell you something. These things are all things that can go wrong. They're all things that take courage. They're all things which, and they're also things which can come back to you. And that's why I always say to these people. Before you all think you're a bad boy, this and that, going like, yeah. You have to remember, yeah. You gotta remember. Whatever you do to someone, no matter where they come from, no matter who they are, they can do it back to you. But when they do it back to you, I don't wanna hear tears. I don't wanna hear crying. But I never, I never ever do it to normal people or people I know. And I hate when you get the friends, yeah, who introduce you to someone, who introduce you to their friends. And then they want you to go and give their friends a slap. See, it can't work like that. If I'm your friend, I'm your friend. Why would I want to go and give my friends a slap? <coughs> Got a police helicopter going over now, so it's going to mess up my recording. Uh, there's been a stabbing on the old Bush Green or shooting one or the other. Police have flooded the place. So if it drowns out the sound, I do apologise to you. So they crash now. Yeah. There are so many different situations. And so many and every situation you have to adapt to. You know? I remember uh, being chased by a guy with two knives because I had to give his mate a slap. But the funny thing is, when you're being chased with two knives, the funny thing is, if you've got two knives, he's got to run like <laughs> So he can't really run, can he? He had two big kitchen knives. So he's got to run like that, isn't he? Because he can't run like that because he stabbed the life out of himself, will not he? <laughs> so I thought it was hilarious. And so anyway, I managed to get uh, rid of him and then crash. Later on I've seen him, but he's only got one knife now, yeah? So he's pulled it out. Now what I'm saying to you people out there is, when it comes down to knives, yeah? I always go towards someone with a knife, because you don't, then you'll let them take liberties and do what they want, okay? So I always run towards them. And so I ran towards him, I said, come on, come on. And as soon as he saw, as soon as he saw that I was uh, gay, he shit himself. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, he started throbbing. 
and an Irish guy, God bless him, came in and said, no, I got a match fat. I hit him and managed to get the knife off him. And I, I wanted to stab him, you know, I hate that because I think, you know, you, you want to stab someone, here you go, have some of your own punishment. But an Irish guy came in and uh, he, he said, oh, come on, boy. The Irish, I always loved them because the Irish, they went through the same struggles as we did when they came over here. So the Irish always, you know, they, they understand the battles and, and, and the street just as well as black people. But you have to remember, it said no Irish, no blacks, no dogs. So, you know, they came through the same struggles as us. So yeah, you know, the street, you always got to remember with the street. Anything can happen at any time. Yeah, you got to know. You got to remember with the street, yeah. You got to remember, every day on that street could be your last day, yeah. That's what you got to realize. Every day you're on that street, it could be the last time you go home. That's the difference with the game. And you need to understand that game, yeah. You need to understand that. You need to understand. You need to understand you could go to prison for the rest of your life. And you came out this morning and you never, you didn't intend to go to prison. But that's how you have to be every day. You have to understand every day you go out your front door, is every day you go die, not return to prison or get hurt. That's the realities of the game. If you ain't ready for them realities, then come out the game. It's simple, it's not hard, yeah? You gotta know exactly where you are. You understand? You know what I hate the most? I hate the most when people. I hate the most when people go and cause the trouble, get hurt, and then want you to go and sort the trouble out because they started it, but it's, it's turned out wrong. Well, hold on, stop. You can't go and cause trouble. Yeah, get hurt, and then when, and then when it comes on top, start crying. It don't work like that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Sorry, we got conversation going. It don't work like that. Yeah. You gotta be careful. Yeah, you gotta be really, really careful. Right. I got conversations going on here, so I'm gonna wrap it up. Do me a favour. Remember where you saw me first. Remember where you heard me last. Easy on the mic. Enjoy the show. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And mind how you crash.